And I wish you hadn't asked me a budget question. I, 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 I thought I was coming out to California to get away from that. For, but, uh, you know, we're, we have already um, been reduced about $800 billion from, what, from the resources that we projected would be available in 2012. So some tough decisions be made. And, and, and sequestration still looms large out there in a the sense that there's another $100 billion of cuts that could come if, if we're not able to come up with a resolution to sequestration, which I think, as most Americans now know, is, is kind of a series of blind cuts uh, where we don't make decisions based on risk management, but just based on uh, automatic cuts made in accordance with the, uh, the sequestration process. What, what I have said to our folks is that, you know, we... Uh, I think three or four years ago when we started dealing with these economic challenges and we started deal with the operational challenges, uh, we made two assumptions. We thought that the, that the operational requirements would be reduced and we thought that the budget process would level out. And that informed the decisions that we made over the past three or four years. And what I've told my team now is that, you know, we'd be making a big mistake if we would have those same assumptions today. And, uh, and so we've looked at over the next 10 years and we've made what I think is a, a realistic projection of the resources that we have right now. Uh, most of our leadership would say that we can't meet the requirements of the strategy uh, at that level of resourcing. Uh, I'm not prepared to say that right now. In fact, I'm, I call to mind uh, frequently what Winston Churchill said, and I think a 19th century physicist said something very similar. Ladies and gentlemen, we're out of money. It's time to think. And so the, uh, the, the, the first thing we, we have to do is, is truly take a hard look at making tough choices and, and prioritize things. And again, that's where that four plus one is so important to us because we look, at, we look at our military capabilities through that lens and we try to make the tough choices to make sure we have what the American people expect us to have to meet our national interests. But, uh, but over time, over the next two years, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, figure out if, if this sequestration process is going to be avoided or not. And if we do get hit with another $100 billion, I, I think we're, we'll be at the point where, you know, strategy has, has ends, the things you want to do, ways the way you want to do it, and then means, the resources that are available for you to do it. And, and over the last few years, we've adjusted the means and we've adjusted the ways. But we haven't changed the ends. We still have the same objectives. And what I would tell you is, I think, uh, as I look ahead, uh, if we're not able to avert uh, continued budget uh, challenges, we're going to have to start to take a look at the ends part of the equation as well. In the job I'm in right now, there's, there's probably, uh, you know, two things that uh, are important to me. Number, you know, number one is providing the president with best military advice and making sure that when we do send young men and women in harm's way, that we do it against a clear political objective and we, we send them in with the wherewithal to accomplish the mission with minimal loss of life or equipment. And that's, you know, that's, that's what drives us in providing best military advice is making sure we give the president viable options to meet his policy objectives, and we give our young men and women in the joint force the tools they need to get the job done.